Hey, hey, how you doing? So, what's going to happen over the next few years with software development? AI is about to have a huge impact. I'm starting to talk about this more and more and more because I've been talking to AI nerds. So, are all the developer jobs going to disappear? No. If you've been watching my videos, you know what I think about this now. They're not going to disappear, but things are going to change. And I'm seeing more and more evidence of this. So is this bad news? A lot of you are going, oh my God, it's terrible news. Quite the opposite, in fact. If you can be flexible, and remember one of the basic rules of uh, biology, the more adaptable species, the more successful species. And this comes to individuals as well. If you can adapt, if you could uh, flow with the motion, as I did decades ago when the web came into place, replacing thick, thick client development, you can do very, very well. In fact, this is going to freak some of you out. I think due to AI, I think this could be a renaissance. I think this could be a huge, huge, huge opportunity for uh, proactive developers because there's going to be a huge amount of work, and business opportunities and freelance opportunities that prior to this we hadn't seen before, except for maybe the web day. So I think this is the biggest move, the biggest move in the software development world since the web. So I talked about this in another video. I see two things. A, I see a whole new type of development or a whole new track of development, a whole new set of services that you can now provide as a freelancer or a contractor or maybe a SaaS business builder, but you could not prior to AI. You see, AI unlocks a bunch of functionality or a bunch of use cases that was not possible before. So that means there's going to be a lot of new app development, a lot of new process development that AI enables. So these are in opportunities that just did not exist, you know, a year or two ago. So it's pretty cool. So how long is this going to take? How long is this uh, going to take before this big shift happens? Well, it's actually starting to happen now. I did a, an interview with uh, somebody who does that. That's his whole, his whole business, in fact, is that. He uses AI combined with traditional web apps to deliver... Um, I won't get into the details. I'll leave it to the video. Basically, he's got a business based on that whole model, which is kind of cool. It's probably going to take, I would say, you know, two to three years before it really starts to roll out and you start seeing a lot of this. Uh, in the meantime, we're starting to see traditional development that we're used to anyway nowadays is going to start changing as well. You're starting to see some big companies are laying off people. Or they're not hiring people anymore. That's because they're, they're, they are in that adjustment period. But trust me, things are going to turn and churn, and all, all of a sudden there's going to be all kinds of opportunities there. So again, let me emphasize, if you're watching this video, this is a, a huge opportunity for you if you are a developer. So let's just jump into some of the skills you're going to need in modern-day AI development. So when I'm talking about modern AI development, I'm not saying you're going to be building AI models. In fact, I would not do that. I would not try to build models. What you got to do is you got to become an expert at the models that are out there, whether it be ChatGPT in the various versions, you got 4.0 and 01, 03 is coming out, or you got DeepSeek, which is another option, and you got Gemini and so on and so forth. All these different models have pros and cons, have their weaknesses. Some are better at coding, some are better at language processing, some are better at images, et cetera, and so forth. So an AI developer professional is somebody who, who is aware of these models and understands which ones are great, which ones are not so great. And you start to, you're going to start to figure out what models make sense to use given the needs of your particular application. That's a skill. So what you should start doing now, you start looking into this. Look at JetGPT, look at Gemini, look at Grok, look at so on and so forth. So get to know them, get to understand them. That's the first level. The second level is to get into um, implementation options. How would you use these models? Right? Whether you use them for a traditional web app, whether you use them in a mobile context, whether it is uh, uh, by licensing, like a ChatGPT where you pay by tokens to access 
their AI, or maybe you do a, a local install of deep, of deep sync as an example. Again, these are skill sets of the modern developer in the AI age. That's the best way of putting it. And, and by the way, this is nothing new, right? When the web came out, it was the same thing. We had different problems and different environments and different architectures. It was the same thing. So I'll give you a very simple example that people should be able to relate to. So in the early days of the web, information sites were done statically with HTML. And then uh, things got a little bit more advanced. People started using server-side programming languages to uh, be able to use server-side includes. They did that before, like, you know, so you had includes to include your top menus and your side menus and so on. And that was done, whether it be with Perl or PHP or uh, Python or uh, Java and C Sharp, et cetera. Then later on, we progressed even more. We had full-blown uh, content management systems to manage content, and it just continued. So as a developer, it was your job to be aware of these options, right? Especially if you're a freelancer where you have to be very flexible in terms of your uh, skill set and knowledge. So you had to be aware of these options when it made sense to use a full-blown CMS or just have a, if you're just doing a two-page or three-page branding site, then it didn't make sense to use a CMS and that's in that context, et cetera. Same thing in the AI space. So we fast forward today, the AI space is, is pretty much the same. So you want to be that knowledgeable developer when you talk to a prospective employer or you go in for a prospective contract, you understand the models and the model landscape so you know how to implement, what to implement, why would you implement model A versus B, why Grok, why GPT, why not do a local install of deep seek, deep seek? How would you implement it? Do you implement it through a web app, mobile app? Maybe you just implement it as a server side uh, applications are triggered when somebody sends an email into the server. That's also an option. So these are all options about how you would leverage AI in your development. So this is in terms of implementation, but there's also, you should also be aware of how you can use AI to speed up your development. So I was talking to somebody a couple of weeks ago now, I mentioned this before, they have a startup and they built their app, which they're taking to market. They built it in three months, whereas prior to AI, they said it would have taken about a year to do. So they would have been crazy to not understand how AI could speed up their own development processes. So you have to look at AI as a use case, if you will, meaning you have jobs that only AI could do, which means you can get paid to implement AI for these type of, these type of jobs. Like chatbots is the uh, easy example. You could also you also have to look at AI in terms of how it will speed up your own development processes as well. Anyway, that's it. So again, I think this AI thing is huge, huge opportunity. Yes, certain types of jobs will go bye-bye. Just, I've seen this before. I saw this before. I saw many types of development jobs uh, go away over time as new technologies came out, right? I'll give you another example. In 2011, uh, HTML5 really started rising uh, it was Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs decided he was going to kill off Flash and ActionScript as a result. That was an important and significant part of development at that time. So within a few years, that was all gone. All those ActionScript jobs gone. All those Flash development jobs and game development jobs gone. All replaced. And all the Flash ActionScripters were bellyaching about, oh my God, you know, Flash is the best at this, that, and the other thing. True, it was in certain areas. But, you know, that went away. And all those jobs in ActionScript and Flash development went away, but they just pivoted doo -doo -doo -doo, to something else, and they're doing fantastic now. So I've seen it before. I can give you, I could spend a whole video just giving you examples of how new technology replaced old, how certain jobs went away permanently, but overall, more jobs were created, more opportunity was created. So do what I did in the early 90s. Don't be stuck in the old paradigm, the old paradigm, the old way, the old way of doing things. Do what I did and move ahead. That open up, opens up tons of opportunity. So again, to close off this video, I think the AI space is going to be opening up opportunities for uh, proactive developers 
that I haven't seen in a long, long time, perhaps since the inception of the web in the 90s. So take advantage. Those who are proactive will do very, very well. I'm Uncle Steph. I teach people the ways of software development and coding and uh, business, personal finance, combat sports. No, I don't teach combat sports. I could. Anyway, I teach people real world skills in the technology space, in the business space, in the freelance space. I have two mentoring programs, my coding mentoring program for people who want to learn how to code from scratch and then want to quickly graduate to advanced level developer thinking and to get a job. And I have a new program coming out very soon, which is on business, finance, entrepreneurship, uh, the money end of things, the more of the money end of things. All right. I hope you find this useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like my hat, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like my hat, give me two thumbs down. If you like my hoodie, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like my hoodie, give me two thumbs down. You know the story. And last piece of advice, avoid Ruby at all costs. Thank you.